The thin walled cross section shown in the figure has a constant wall thickness of t equal to half an inch. Assume that B1 is 12, B2 is 8, and H is 8 inch. If the shear force acting on the cross section is V equal to 2100 pounds directed in the negative Y direction, determine the shear flow at B, at C, and at F. Point B is located in the upper flange, point C is at the centroid, and point F is located on the lower flange. Again, web stands for, in these types of shapes, web stands for the vertical element, and flange stands for those horizontal elements. Shear flow equation is VQ over IT, and we have learned that shear flow is shear stress multiplied by the thickness. So it's actually shear stress thickness independent. Okay, um, for this for this section, we ne we have to calculate V, Q, and I. V and I are constant for a section. Doesn't matter what is the point that you want to determine shear stress or shear flow. Q is depending on where is the point of interest. So it the question simplifies into determining Q for different points. Okay, determining the moment of inertia for this section. And the location of the centroid is something that we have talked about that several times. So I'm not going to talk about details of that. The centroid would be located 4.83 inch from the bottom part. And IZ, the moment of inertia above the horizontal axis, would be 173. Now let me focus on calculating the moment of area for these three points. For point B, point B is located, as shown here, on the upper flat. We know that Q is area multiplied by D, right? Area is the area of the part that we are considering for the calculation of Q, and D is distance of centroid of that area to the centroid of the entire section, okay? So for this shape, what is the area that we need to consider? Point B is on the upper flange, and I need to cut that upper flange from that point which in this case is located, as we see over here, on the half of the length of that flange, and then consider either of these two halves, like the left half or the right half. Okay? So this is, the purple shape is the area that we need to consider for the calculation of Q. Okay, one thing. Some of you may ask this question. Should I consider this area exactly from the side of the web, or... I can divide the flange into half. The answer is, it doesn't matter, because the thickness of that web compared to the length of the flange is negligible. So either way you go, like cutting that from the side of the web or cutting that into half, which is at the center of the web, you will get almost the same number. Okay? In this case, I cut that into half and consider that from the center of that flange. All right. The thickness of the flange is half an inch, the length of the upper flange is 12 inch, half of that would be 6 inch. So area for this case would be 6 multiplied by half an inch, or 3 squared inch. Okay? Now let's talk about D. The location of the centroid from the bottom part of this is 4.83. And H is given to be 8 inch. H is distance of centroid of the lower flange to the centroid of the upper flange. And the thickness of that section is half an inch. So distance from the very bottom part to the center of the top part would be 8.25 inch. So this is the location of the center from the very bottom part. And 8.25 would be distance of center of that top flange to the bottom part. Okay? How much would be D in this case? D would be the difference between these two values. Distance of center of that purple shape to the centroid of the entire shape, which is 3.42 inch. So with, with calc after calculating D and A, I can plug the values into this. Area is 6 by half an inch, which is 3 squared inch, and D is 3.42, and that gives me 10.26 squared inch, and I can plug the values and determine the shear flow at that point. That is VQ over I, 
Note that there is not subscript for V and I because they are constant, but Q depends on the point of interest. V is 2100 pound, no unit conversion is needed. Q is 10.26 and I is 173. And that gives me shear flow equal to 124.5 pound per inch. In other words, in one inch of that, the length of the beam, there would be 124.5 pound force that should be transferred through that point. Okay? And if I want to determine stress, I simply divide that by the thickness and that transforms into stress. Any question for this part? All right, now let's do the same for the lower flange. For the lower flange, we follow the same concept. And we again, we are going to cut the lower flange into half. This then subcentroid of the entire section to the bottom part is 4.83. And I need to consider the purple shape on the lower flange, the half of the flange. The thickness of that is half an inch. The lower flange has a width of 8 inch, half of that would be 4 inch, so area would be 4 multiplied by half an inch. And D would be 4.83 minus half of the thickness of that bottom part. So that would be 4.58. Now I'm going to plug the values here and calculate Q. Q would be area multiplied by D, area is 4 multiplied by half an inch, and D is 4.58 and I get this Q value. And shear flow would be VQ over I, and again, once you notice, you may notice here that Q is the only variable that is changing. So 2100, 9.16 divided by I, we get 111.2 pound over H. Okay, one thing, one like conceptual question here. The shear flow in the bottom flange is lower than the other one. How can we validate this? The lower flange is smaller. Smaller area means smaller Q. Smaller Q means lower shear flow in that part. So it's expected to have lower value. All right, what do you expect to see as shear flow in the centroid? Do you expect to see a number larger than these two, smaller than these two, or somewhere between these two values? because shear flow is always maximum at the centroid, okay? All right, so let's calculate that for the centroid. For the centroid, I need to cut that section passing through the centroid, and I can consider either the top half or bottom half. It doesn't matter which side I consider. So in this case, I have considered the bottom half, and I need to calculate Q for this part. So this is the location of the centroid from the bottom part, and the height of the middle part would be 4.83 minus the thickness of the bottom part, which is 4.33. Now, I can easily calculate how much is Q for this. Let's do that. To calculate Q, I need to split that T shape into two parts, like the bottom part and the vertical part. The bottom part has the area of 8 multiplied by half an inch. How much would be D here? How much is distance of this point to the centroid of that entire section? Similar to what we calculated before, it's 4.83 minus half an inch over 2. And that is for the bottom part. Now for the second part, for the vertical part, what is the area? 4.33 multiplied by the thickness of the web, which is half an inch. And what is D here? How much is distance of that vertical part to the center of the entire section? That would be half of its height. So that would be 4.33 over 2. And that gives me Q, which is 23 inch uh, cubed. And I can plug that into shear flow equation. And we get 2100 pounds multiplied by 23 divided by I. And we get 279 pounds over inch. As expected, this number is larger than the other two values that we have calculated before. 